Welcome to history class students. You have all heard about one of the great wonders that is Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal was built in medieval India. But we have to understand how did the architecture of the period evolved from one point to this point where we have a magnificent building like Taj Mahal. Yes. Today's topic is the Indo-Islamic architecture which developed and evolved during the Sultanate period. Indo-Islamic, as the term denotes, is a combination of Indian, that is Hindu, and Islamic. Indo-Islamic architecture was neither strictly Islamic, neither strictly Hindu. It was actually a combination of both. And when we talk about Indo-Islamic architecture, we are talking of which period? We are talking of 11th century, 12th century, 13th and 14th century AD. This is the period when Delhi Sultans were reigning over the kingdoms in and around Delhi. And some of the great buildings, they came out from their effort to show the grandeur and the strength of the Delhi Sultanate. So what are those buildings and what are the features of Indo-Islamic architecture? First, let's understand some of the important features of Indo-Islamic architecture, which was evolving gradually during this period. First of all, we must understand that all the previous buildings in India, prior to coming of the Turks, were mainly limited to temples and certain forts. Use of pillar was very common. But with coming of Indo-Islamic blend, the pillar was done away with. Instead, we find use of large-scale use of the arch and large-scale use of the dome. How did this arch and dome reach India? It reached India with the Turkish rulers who came. Along with them came the Persian influence the Byzantine influence, which actually was borrowed from the Roman period. So we can say the Roman influence and the Byzantine influence can be seen in the use of arch and in the dome. The other important feature of the Indo-Islamic architecture is the strength and the solidity. The strength and the solidity which is visible in the structure of the buildings. The gates were lofty, the walls were huge, and the stones that were used, that were used in such a fashion to project the solidity. The third important feature of Indo-Islamic architecture is the use of complex and intricate designs and devices in the architecture itself. These were geometric, designs. You can see the sacred text and historical inscriptions inscribed over the arches and the domes. So geometric designs replaced the earlier motifs which were related with natural world and the deities of the Hindus. Now there are no deities there are no human figures. Instead, we find the geometric designs and the floral designs. The floral designs take over. This is a unique feature which is part of the evolution of Indo-Islamic architecture. The next important thing is the use of mortar. What type of mortar for making the building strong? 
This is the lime, fine lime mortar, which was brought to India for the first time. We also find, apart from use of arch and dome, the solidity part, the geometrical part, the use of mortar, we also find that the buildings are now specifically limited to making of tombs and mosques. Now let's look at some of the important examples of Indo-Islamic architecture. The first most important example is the Qutub Minar complex. The Qutub complex houses in itself several important buildings. The first of these buildings is the Qutub Minar, the Minar, the Minaret itself, it's made of red sandstone. It is completely a new type of building which was seen first time in India, started by Kutubuddin Nabak and completed by Iltatnish. Kutub Minar also has an important building within itself that is the Alai Darwaza. Why Alai Darwaza is important? Because the southern gate, Darwaza means gate, the southern gate has a true dome, which was first time used in any buildings in the world here. The true dome is visible in the Alai Darwaza, which is part of the Qutub complex. And it was the contribution of Alauddin Khelji. When we see Balban's tomb, we find use of true arch for the first time, just as we see in the Qutub complex, the use of dome as well as the arch. Apart from this, some of the earlier buildings which came up due to the blending of Indian and Hindu style of architecture is Adhai Dinka Chopra, done at Ajmer, which again reflects the Islamic features of making a building. Another important example of this blending and harmonious coming together of two styles is the tomb of Sikandar Lodi during this period. Sikandar Lodi's tomb tells us about use of two domes instead of one. That's still another unique feature. We also find that these sultans were very fond of making the new cities and the name of Muhammad Mid Tughlaq, Gyasuddin Tughlaq, they stand apart. Why Gyasuddin Tughlaq? Because Gyasuddin Tughlaq constructed the Tughlaqabad fort, which is a city by itself. Similarly, similarly Muhammad Mid Tughlaq did the Jahapana. We also find the Siri was done by Alauddin Khilji. And it's a unique building in itself. We today find the remnants of all these buildings standing straight and attract large number of tourists who are interested in the study of the harmonious blend of Indo-Islamic architecture. The Indo-Islamic architecture will later on flower and evolve into more complex and more harmonious blending of two different styles and bring in the Central Asian influence which will be visible during the Mughal period.